Here's my problem. I feel like many, many pretty girls are very alike and not edgy at all. And I don't want them to be, but it feels so difficult to send something particular in them. They might be, for example, just study English and read the last mainstream bestseller or alternation of Twilight. So it all feels buried on the surface of existing. How can I truly connect with just a simple girl when the contents of normal people, what they read, what they do, feel so trivial compared to the real stuff? Especially connected in long term, having something to talk to her about. Sounds like you're bored. The thing that I always ask when people are curious or not able to see fascination, have intrigue in the other, is can you see, can you have fascination or intrigue in yourself? You can e easily imagine that if there are things that you're very clear on, as far as your own interests, your own purpose, your own passions, that those things automatically direct you to areas of interest, passion, um, in your own life, in your own choices, right? So whether that's joining the book club or joining the skydiving club or whatever it is, you know, it ain't so complicated that if you hang out with the uh, at Starbucks, what do they call that? Basic birches, basic birches. If you hang out with the basics, then you're going to get the basics. Um, and that could be another way to look at the whole question. Why are you inquiring into that which is boring to you, where, where it's boring to you? <laughs> why, are you saying, why are you saying, why are you going to find out why the boring girl is boring to you if she's boring to you. Does that make sense? Don't try to change the boring girl. Go find somebody not boring. So now you're saying, oh, but everyone's so boring. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Along my journey, what I found is that I did have discord. I did have difficulty feeling connection with people whose interests were so different than mine, just different. And I invariably judged them. I said, oh, you're not interested in deep talks. You're not interested in meditation. You're not interested in travel or everyone is interested in travel, right? But um, people who weren't deep in my way, weren't reflective in my way, Oh, they want to just go to university, they want to go to school, they want to get a job in marketing or advertising, and it's like, oh God, you see a million of that, a million of those kinds of girls and guys in New York. And it's very painful, <laughs> sure, it's very painful. Um, and yet, so much of that was me projecting my own desire for depth uh, onto other people so that they could be deep and I could connect with them. But the more that I encountered and inquired into my own depth and my own need for depth, the more that I felt that my range of relationship, um, the people I could hang out with, was much, much more broad. Because I'm not there trying to satisfy my own need for depth, because that's already satisfied through my Zen teacher, through my reading, through my close friends, right? Then there are other things that you connect with on a person, with a person, okay? Generally speaking, you could say, and I've said this before, that you need somebody who's intelligent, okay? The brand of intelligence is so particular to each person. You're gonna resonate, like I really resonate with science people, even though I'm a very arts person. Maybe that's why I resonate with them, because that's the unexplored part of myself. Right? So there's going to be differences on who you uh, prefer that has nothing to do with who you are like and what you are good at. So that means you have to be open to experiencing many different things and then finding out what feels right. So I lost my train of thought. 
So there's intelligence. Then you have affection, compassion. If somebody is capable of being affectionate with you, then there's a generally good feeling if you're somebody who likes affection. All right. Then you have compatibility at the same tone or frequency of your own uh, affection. Then the other thing is industriousness, that she has her own world, that she's busy with her own thing and not using you to feel more involved in the world. She has to have that and you have that and then you complement each other. From that, the nuances, okay? Now that could have been a basic birch, a basic bitch, what I just described. Okay, she's intelligent, sure. She's industrious, she has her own thing, sure. She's affectionate, sure. But I still feel like I can't connect with her, right? This is gonna be something you have to explore because it's just not true that the nuances, the deeper nuances that go beyond personality type, how it is with another person, that's something that is what, it, that's the important thing, how it is with another person beyond those elemental things, elementary things which need to be there. Provided they're there, you will find nuances. And this requires that you're comfortable with yourself and that you're open to the other person's story. Because what I'm hearing really is I'm not open to the other person's story or you haven't gone far enough to explore the other person's story. And as we said at the beginning, this has so much, with set, so much to do with you making contact with your own need for satisfaction in terms of depth. And then beyond that, yeah, it's very uh, surface, uh, critically critical at the surface level, meaning you don't hang out with cows if you don't want to be around cow shit. You don't hang around with birds if you don't want to be around birds. You don't hang, you have to hang around people who live in a sphere of fascination that's compatible to your relational and empathetic values, all right? So you have to explore that. It's always both. You always have to go inwards and you always have to go and make contact with everything outside in order to see where the inner fits into the outer with great openness, great appreciation, and great gratitude. Don't waste your life.